somebody said here the fire that consumed the captain from elijah was not from god is that true yes it was not but is that true i, I repeat it was not you can't tell me god answered one satan answered one except we're saying god did not answer that one too and that now, it is left for you to choose whether you believe jesus or elijah that's the crux of the matter it's god because the same fire that came from god came in first kings where he called down fire to leak the sacrifice you can't so, tell me god it was judgment of the god like the plagues of egypt when Moses by his rod produced plagues to judge the gods of Egypt, the fire of Elijah on Mount Camel was fire to consume the sacrifice and judge the gods of Baal. That is different from this one. Yeah, did. And Christ said, no, you don't know the kind of spirit you are. Saying, mine is a spirit of grace. Elijah was vengeance. Nah, nah, nah. He just explained a covenant change that I'm here to save men's lives. So God does not repent. Because God is not a man forever. Is that so what, what brought the fire down? I don't know where it came from. In the play, you go learn and you will learn hard. We speak to the nations. Falsehood is collapsing. Deception is collapsing. The spell is broken. The oppression. We speak to the nation. <laughs> Dr. Damina said it was not God that answered the prayer of Elijah. Yes, it was not. Somebody said here, yeah, the fire that consumed the captain from Elijah was not from God. Is that true? I don't know where it came from. Listen, <laughs> if it's from above, then it can be from God or from Satan. Yes or no? Now, the heaven means realms. Where did that fire come from? Maybe not from the third heaven, maybe from Satan. To say that, she says Elijah was practicing necromancy. There is Satan that answered Elijah's prayer, not God. That's very deadly. It's God. Because the same fire that came from God came in first kings when he called down fire to leak the sacrifice you can't tell me god answered one satan answered one except we're saying god did not answer that one too and that let me be honest with you when you see me come out and make a statement i have done my homework i'm not a careless teacher no ways i've done my homework so when you hear me say something don't argue with me go and do your homework first so that you don't get public disgrace no matter how strange the statement sounds if you hear me say it don't oppose me take it respectfully go and do your homework first before you come back and if you do your homework 99.99999 you will come back and tell me it's correct was why the apostles now told jesus look listen the samaritans just rejected you let us call down fire like elijah did and christ said no you don't know the kind of spirit you have saying mine is a spirit of grace elijah was vengeance now 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 he just explained a covenant change that i'm here to save men's lives not to destroy the so problem the is many nigerians who are christians do not have faith in jesus they do not believe that jesus is god they see jesus as the same with elijah and moses so elijah if he says something jesus cannot correct it because they are age mates many nigerians do not understand that jesus is the lord and savior of elijah and moses jesus is the reason for moses jesus is the reason for elijah elijah and moses came to announce jesus so that's when, when jesus shows up he starts correcting moses the big boy is Moses in Matthew chapter 5. You have her. Moses said, I for I, tooth for tooth. I, his master, I say, Bless those that curse you. Pray for those that despitefully use you, that you may be like your father, which is in heaven. Why? Jesus said, No one has ever seen the father. So Moses and Elijah never saw God, which means their statements will be subject to correction when God shows up jesus is not junior god jesus is not god's errand boy jesus is not god's boy jesus is god almighty who became a man to die for man he is the beginning is the end his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father the prince of peace and the government shall be upon where his shoulder to order and to establish so it is the coming of jesus that will order and establish the kingdom of god second kings chapter 1 verse 9 put it up quickly brother on the computer then the king sent unto him a captain of 50 with his 50 and he went up to him and behold he sat on the top of an hill and he spake unto him that man of god the king has said come down 
Next verse. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy 50. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Next verse. Again also he sent unto him another captain of 50 with his 50. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus said the king said, Come down quickly. Next verse. And Elijah answered and said unto him, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God, the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Next verse. And he said, sent again a captain of the, of the third, fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these 50 thy servants be precious in their sight. They started begging him. Now wait, stop there. This fire is different from the fire of Mount Camel. There are two fires. And the two fires are not the same. The two fires in Elijah's story are not the same. This fire is not from God. The fire of Mount Camel is from God because that fire was a miracle. Remember, Mount Camel was, call on your God, I call on my God. And let the God that answered by fire be God. Remember, it was judgment of the idols. And that fire on Mount Camel did not kill anybody. It only licked the sacrifice, licked the fire, licked the wood. That's all. It was judgment of the God, like the plagues of Egypt. When Moses by his rod produced plagues to judge the gods of Egypt, the fire of Elijah on Mount Carmel was fire to consume the sacrifice and judge the gods of Baal. That is different from this one. This one came to consume human beings. So what does Jesus have to say about this fire that consumed people? Luke chapter 9 verse 53. And they did not receive him. Because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. Next verse. And when his disciples James and John saw this. They said Lord. Will thou that we command fire. To come down from heaven. And consume them. Even as Elijah did. Where did Elijah command fire that consumed people? Eh? second kings chapter one eh? so now let's see what jesus will say about that fire of second kings chapter one next verse but he turned and rebuked them and said you know not what manner of spirit you are of next verse for the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives but to save them and they went to another village now wait, if Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever, if today he rebuked them for wanting to bring fire to consume people, if he was there when Elijah did that prayer, will he have rebuked Elijah? Why? Because that fire was not going to come from him. He said, you know, no. so that fire that consumed people was, Elijah opened the door to spirits and those spirits took at neither give room Now, it is left for you to choose whether you believe Jesus or Elijah. That's the crux of the matter. Matthew 17, 5. While he yet spake, go back to verse 3. Because you have to know it well to answer them outside. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah. Who and who? The two big boys of the Old Testament. The two big boys of the Old Testament. Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Next verse. They answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you permit, let us make here three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Let three of you be preaching in our church. Today Moses will preach, tomorrow Elijah will preach and bring down fire. Then next tomorrow you will preach and bring grace. Next verse. While he yet spake, 
behold a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud which said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him hear hear who are you to hear only jesus look at the next verse everybody read the next verse with me and when the disciples had it they fell on their face and were so afraid next verse very loud everybody want to go and jesus came and touched them and said arise and be not afraid next verse now 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 everybody louder the louder the loudest want to go and when they had lifted up their eyes so where did elijah and moses go they were removed out of the equation this is the one that you should hear hear jesus only jesus said that fire is not of my spirit i didn't come to destroy men i came to save lives clear clear okay wait let me show you something numbers 23 19 before exodus i just give you two numbers 23 19 put it up god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent had he said and shall he not do it or had he spoken and shall he not make it good so god does not repent because god is not a man is that what he said hello hello said me god does not repent because god is not a man okay good first samuel fifteen ten. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel saying, next verse, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. So Samuel said God repented. And God is not a man that he should repent. But Samuel said, and Samuel is a prophet, just like Elijah. Genesis 6.6 6. And it repented the Lord. <laughs> now wait, let me ask you. If God is God, should he repent? Any God that repents is not God. To repent means something took you by surprise. But God sees the end from the beginning. So he can't be repenting. But Moses said God repented. It repented God that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. This is Moses. Judges 2.18 and when the lord raised them up judges then the lord will, then the lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge for it repented the lord then said the lord unto moses behold i will rain bread from where who told moses who told moses i will rain what bread from where for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or not. So Moses said God told him that he will rain bread from where? Heaven. Who said it? Eh? John 6.30 Then said they therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou walk? 31 Everybody. We're going to read 31 and 32 like a mass choir. This is Jesus now speaking want to go our fathers did it manna where in the desert as it is written he gave them what bread from heaven to eat who said that moses next verse then everybody want to go then jesus said unto them verily verily i say unto you moses gave you not that bread from heaven someone's telling somebody's writing on my facebook see it see it see it the fire came down see it see it moses gave you not that bread from heaven see it why will moses say god said he will bring bread down and jesus will say no bread came from heaven why will elijah say if i be a man of god let fire come down jesus will say no that fire is not from my spirit my, my i didn't come to destroy human beings i came to save because in the old testament nobody saw god nobody knew knew god the coming of jesus was the first arrival of god so the old testament people spoke 
prophecy and they also spoke their opinions let me give you another opinion of moses exodus 4 24 let's read together exodus 4 24 one to go and it came to pass by the way in the inn that the lord met him god want to kill moses god doesn't know how to kill moses so god is looking for how to kill him is that god well lie it and lie here i tell you if god wants to kill you while he's thinking you have died while he's still thinking you have died you will die without even knowing that he was thinking it so this is moses's assumption let me show you another assumption okay wait 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 let's settle this matter how many of you know that moses was not there when all of genesis happened he was born in exodus chapter 2 so genesis has finished before moses came on so for him to write what happened will be what people told him and what he gathered by way of material put together and the things he received from god and the things he assumed that's why you must rightly let me give you another one of moses's assumption genesis 18 21 i will go down and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it which is common to me and if not i will know god doesn't know whether sodom and gomorrah will hear him he has to come down and come and see god who sees the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end doesn't know whether sodom will hear until he comes down so god is like a man he doesn't know until he comes there so there's another moses is assumption why is he like that hebrews 1 1 amplified in many separate revelations each of which set forth a portion of the truth in different ways god spoke of old to our forefathers in and by the prophets separate revelation so in the writings of moses there is only a portion of truth in the writings of elijah there is only a portion of the truth jesus is the totality of the truth so what they had is what we call progressive revelation so because their revelation was progressing you will see their nuances you will see their confusions you will see their culture you will see their assumptions and you will see the word of god in the midst so now in teaching you divide so the new testament explains the old testament is it clear is it clear why did i take you through this journey so that you can help people in the second service we deal with ark of noah 